So this lesson we're going to have a look at expanding binomial products, um, including a couple of special cases, but everything we're going to look at today is expanding binomial products. So remembering uh, our definition of binomial as two terms, okay, and expanding as multiplying out or getting rid of brackets. So just pause this video and write down the learning intention. Okay, so going back to our example from a couple lessons ago where we looked at multiplying binomials or expanding out um, binomials as being finding the area. Okay, so we, and here we have this rectangle where we've got the length over here, 7 plus 4, and the width uh, being 2 plus 3 down here. Yep, so it looks very similar to the last rectangle we looked at a couple lessons ago. So if we wanted to find the area of this rectangle, we can find the area of um, the individual little rectangles inside and just sum them up. Yeah, so we've got that 7 times 2 is 14, 4 times 2 is 8, 7 times 3 is 21, and 4 times 3 is 12 there. Okay, so very straightforward. So if we sum them all up, we get that the area is 55 centimeters squared. But, you know, we've got an easier way of doing this, don't we? We have that area is length times width, where length is 7 plus 4, yep, and width is 2 plus 3. Okay, so 7 plus 4 is 11, 2 plus 3 is 5, 11 times 5 is 55, exactly what we had before. But this lesson we're going to be looking at how we can multiply out these binomial products when we've got algebra in them. Yeah? So we'll have a look at how this multiplies out to give us these four terms and how we can add them together to get the final answer. So looking at our generic case here where we don't have numbers but we've got um, pronumerals here, our variables, okay, we have that this rectangle has a length of a plus b and a width of c plus d. So having a look at our rule here, a plus b times c plus d, multiplying out these two binomials. So the first one we want to look at, we want to multiply everything in that first bracket by everything in the second bracket. So the first one we look at is a times c, that gives us ac. Okay, then we've got a times d gives us ad. B times C is BC, and B times D is BD. So everything in that first bracket has now been multiplied by everything in the second bracket. Okay, so just, again, pause the video and write this down. Uh, make sure that you follow these steps when we go to do our examples in the next couple of slides. So our first step is multiply each term in the first bracket with each term in the second bracket. You'll end up with four terms. You'll always have four terms if you've got um, a binomial multiplied by another binomial. Okay, and then our second step, simplify by combining like terms if we can. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of examples. Let's expand and simplify. Okay, so we have our two binomials here. And our first step tells us to multiply everything in the first binomial by everything in the second binomial. Okay, so we have that m times n is mn m times negative 7 is negative 7m, negative 3 times n is negative 3n, and negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. Our second step says to simplify by combining like terms, but in this um, example we don't have any like terms. Okay, we've got an nm, mn term, an m term, an n term and a constant. None of those are like terms, so we can't actually simplify this anymore. This is as simple as it gets. Alright, let's look at this second one. So again, step one, multiply everything in this binomial by everything in that binomial. Okay, each of the terms. We get x times 2x is 2x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 5 times 2x is 10x, and 5 times negative 3, watch your signs, negative 15. Okay, in this case, we can combine like terms, have a look to see which terms are like. I'm only seeing one x squared term, so this doesn't have any like terms. 
I'm using one constant, and this doesn't have any like terms, but I am seeing two x terms in the middle here, so we can combine these. Okay? Negative 3x plus 10x is positive 7x, so that middle term becomes positive 7x. Okay, everything else stays the same. Okay, last example. Remember again our first step, multiply each of the terms in this binomial by each of the terms in this binomial. Okay, negative 2 times negative p. Watch your signs here again. Positive 2p, so a negative times a negative is a positive. Negative 2 times positive 8 is negative 16. Positive 5p times negative p. Okay, a positive times a negative is going to be negative. And 5, 5 times 1 will give us 5. P times P, P squared. So positive 5P times negative P is negative 5P squared. And positive 5P times positive 8 will give us 40P. Okay. In this case, again, we're looking for like terms. We want to simplify by combining like terms. And I can see, again, two P terms here. Okay, So over here we've got a P. Over here we've got another P term. So we can combine those two. Okay, And we end up with positive 42P. So positive 2p plus another 40p gives us positive 42p in the middle there. Everything else stays the same. Okay, so just pause this video for a second and go and have a look at exercise 3.5, uh, question 3 and 4, just the first column. These are the questions that are listed on the work plan. All right, so hopefully you've had a go at multiplying out some binomials. And um, I hope you're checking with the back of the book as you go, because a lot of students tend to, the sort of mistakes that students tend to make um, have to, usually have to do with sort of signs or um, adding and subtracting like terms. So just checking as you go will make sure you're staying on track and not making any of those little mistakes. Uh, we're going to have a look now at a couple of special cases. We're still multiplying out binomials, but we've got a couple of special cases that um, where we can uh, sort of skip a couple of steps because they have some special properties. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is called difference of two squares. I'm going to jump straight into looking at a couple of examples and, and we'll talk later on about why it's called difference of two squares. Okay, so again, um, expand and simplify. First one, we've got two binomials. So multiplying each term in this bracket by each term in this bracket. Same procedure as before. Okay, so step one, multiplying that out, we get x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Four, 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times negative 4, negative 16 at the end there. Okay, our step two, always um, adding like terms. And we've got the two middle terms there, the two x terms, that we can add together. And you'll notice that... One of them is a negative 4x, one of them is a positive 4x, so these two terms actually cancel out. A negative 4 plus 4 is going to give us 0, so we're going to end up with x squared minus 16. Let's look at one more. Okay, again, two binomials, everything in this term multiplied by everything in that term. So we get 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 2p is 16p. Negative 2p times 8 is negative 16p. And negative 2p times positive 2p is negative 4p squared. Be careful with the sign and with that squared there. Okay, again, looking to see if there are any like terms that we can combine to simplify this. And we notice, again, the two middle terms, they're like, both p terms. And again, we notice that one is positive 16 and 1 is negative 16, so those two terms are going to cancel out. 16 minus 16 is 0. So again, we're left with 64 minus 4p squared. So I hope you're starting to pick up on what might be special about this rule. Okay, so up here we notice that these two brackets are almost identical, aren't they? And um, we've got the first term is both x, the last term in both brackets, 4. The only thing that's different is that the middle sign one is a plus and one is a minus. Okay. So that's why this plus and this minus, that tells us why this middle term, uh, the two middle terms there, one's a minus, one's a plus, and they cancel each other out. 
Okay, so we end up with x squared minus 16. And the same thing is happening down here as well. These two brackets are identical except for that middle sign. Yeah? So again, because one's a minus and one's a plus, we get these two middle terms here that are identical except plus and minus and they cancel out. Okay? So that's something that's very special about these difference of two squares. That's why it's called difference of two squares. Because if we look at our final answer, we'll see that this is a squared term, x squared. Yeah, this is a squared term. That's 4 squared, 16. And it's the difference between the two. Remember, difference means subtract. Down here we have the same thing. This is a squared term, 8 squared. This is a squared term, uh, 2p all squared. Right? And we have a minus in between. That's why it's called the difference of two squares. And that's why I've been making you write down your squared terms at the top of the page. It's really important that you can recognize those when we go to factorize um, these sorts of expressions. Okay. At our rule, um, we have that if we have two brackets that are identical except for the sign in between, one's a plus, one's a minus, okay, we can expand that out to be a squared, the first term squared, minus b squared, the last term squared. Okay. So that's a bit of a shortcut that we can take if we have difference of two squares, if the brackets are identical except for the middle sign. So let's look at a couple more examples. Just um, again, expand and simplify. So we recognize these two as the difference of two squares. Okay, so the answer is going to be the first term squared, 2y all squared is 4y squared, minus the last term squared, 1 squared is 1. Okay, so 4y squared minus 1. We can skip that middle step. If you expand it out the long way, the way we were doing before with our multiplying binomials, you're going to get the same thing. But this is a bit of a shortcut that we can take. Okay, one more. Um, 3a plus 6 times 3a minus 6. Again, we have two identical brackets except for the sign in the middle. Um, so our answer will be the first term squared minus the last term squared. Okay, 9a squared minus 36. Alright, so again, pause the video and have a look at these are the um, questions that are listed in your work plan for difference of two squares. Try and use the rule and make sure that you're checking with the back of the book as you go. Alright, so one more special case, one more shortcut that we can take. This one's called perfect squares. Okay, so again, let's start with a couple of examples and see if we can kind of figure out what our shortcut or our rule is going to be. So expand and simplify. This time we have x plus 4 squared. Okay. Um, instead of having two different binomials that we're multiplying together, we're just squaring one binomial. And we know that with, uh, with squaring numbers, we're multiplying the number by itself, and that's exactly the same for our binomials. We're just multiplying this binomial by itself. Okay. So writing it out the long way, we've got x plus 4 times x plus 4. Yeah? Squaring that binomial. And we know that we have to multiply everything in this bracket by everything in this bracket. So we get x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Four, 4 times x is 4x also. And 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, so that's our step 1. Multiply everything in our first bracket by everything in our second bracket. And then our second step, combining our like terms to simplify. And we note that the middle terms are like. But in this case, you also know that they're exactly the same, right? So 4x plus 4x is going to give us 4 plus 4 is 8, so we get 8x. Okay, so x squared plus 8x plus 16 is our simplified answer. All right, let's look at a second example and see if we can notice the pattern. Okay, we have 8 minus 2p all squared. So that is 8 minus 2p times 8 minus 2p multiplied by itself squared. This is what we get. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times negative 2p is negative 16p. Negative 2p times 8 is also negative 16p. And negative 2p times negative 2p, be careful with your sign here, that's 4p squared. Okay, positive 4p squared. Again, combining like terms, we notice that the middle terms are like and that they're also identical. Okay, so negative 16 minus 16, we get negative 32. So negative 16p minus 16p is negative 32p. 
So that simplifies down to 64 minus 32p plus 4p squared. Okay. So when you see this in your um, in your homework or on a test, when you're expanding out binomials, when you're, you're squaring them, okay, so when you're squaring a binomial, make sure that you end up with three terms, not two. I know a lot of students, when they're trying to expand this out, they end up with x squared plus 4 squared. Okay, and that's not right. You need that middle term there. But you will notice that when you expand it out the long way, those two middle terms will always be the same. Okay, so let's have a look at our rule. What do you think our rule is going to be? a plus b all squared is our first term squared, a squared, plus our last term squared, b squared, plus 2 times the first term times the last term. Okay. So let's have a look at a couple more examples. Let's do it the short way. And if you need to pause this video, go back and look at the examples from the previous slide. You'll notice that our simplified version gives us this. Okay, the first term squared plus the last term squared plus the first times the last times two. Okay. If it's a negative in between, like our um, second example was, that middle term will also be negative. Okay, but be really careful, the last term has to be positive, okay? Because negative b squared is positive b squared, okay? A negative number squared will be positive. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple more examples. 2y plus 1 all squared. So looking at our rule, we get that it's the first term squared a squared, so we get 4y squared plus this last term squared is... 1, okay, so 1 squared is 1, and then this is the part that can be a little bit messy, the first times the last times 2, okay, so the first 2y times the last 1 times 2. So simplifying this down, we have to look at this and multiply this out, so 2 times negative 2y times 1 gives us positive 4y. If you need a second to pause and just digest that, write it down, make sure that it's all correct, please do that. And then we'll look at one more example. Okay, 3a minus 6 all squared. So we're looking at this one here, right? That middle term is going to be negative. Okay, so our first term squared, 3a all squared, is 9a squared. Our last term squared, negative 6 squared, is positive 36. And then our middle part, slightly messy, our first times our last times 2. So we get 3a times negative 6 times 2. That simplifies down to 9a squared minus 36a plus 36. Okay, so again, got a couple of questions to do in, that are listed in your work plan. Have a look at these ones and make sure you're able to kind of get your head around the difference of two squares and the perfect squares, how to do those as a shortcut. If you're still a little unsure, then do it out the long way, and then use the shortcut and see if you get the same thing, all right? Because next lesson, you're going to get a worksheet that has all of them mixed in together, so binomials, just regular binomials, and the difference of two squares and perfect squares, and I want to see if you're able to spot the difference of two squares and the perfect squares, and figure out which which will we need to use?